Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Tactical Magic. This is Molly Mandelberg, your host, and we have a more business strategy episode for you here today. Um, as you know, this show vacillates between transformational tools for healing and growth and getting out of our own way so we can show up powerfully. And also, sometimes we talk about actual business technologies, launching strategies, um, mo different modalities and ways that you can share yourself and get visible and make a bigger difference and help more people with hopefully less time spent. So I'm really excited to share this guest with you today who has created something really beautiful that I think a lot of you might be interested in. So hang tight for just a second. We'll be right back. It's not just about mastering technology. It's not just about brand or messaging. It's not just about making more money. It's about showing up in a big way so your people can find you. This is about bringing your most wild and authentic self into the hustle and grind. Welcome to Tactical Magic, a business strategies podcast for the warrior goddess entrepreneur. Awesome. So today I have Jillian Leslie here to, with me today. She's the co-founder with her husband, David, of Catch My Party, which started in 2009, the Milo Tree pop-up app, which started in 2016, and Milo Tree Cart started in 2022. With her husband, David's technical expertise and Jillian's business and marketing know-how, they've been able to grow three successful online businesses businesses. She's also the host of the Blogger Genius Podcast, where for the past four years, she's been interviews, interviewing successful online entrepreneurs, content creators, and industry experts. She started her online business journey in 2009 and has lots of experience building vibrant communities. Now, Jillian's goal is to empower other female creators to build successful online businesses that change their lives and give them the freedom that they crave. Welcome to the show, Jillian. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so happy to have you here. So tell us a little bit about how you, because you mentioned in 2009, you jumped into having online businesses. So what was that transition like? How did you sort of make that leap? I was actually a writer in Hollywood and my husband was working at MySpace back in the day. And we just decided to take our feet in our own hands and thought, you know what, let's let's start a side hustle before there was the term side hustle. And because I was writing teen comedies and he was at MySpace where it was all teens, we're like, hey, let's create a social photo sharing site for teen girls. And so we built this purple, pink and purple site where teen girls could upload photos of things like their proms and their sweet 16s and their bar and bat mitzvahs and their quinceañeras. And then it was really interesting. We learned, I think I learned my biggest business lesson at this moment because I'm a 30 something year old mom and I'm stalking teen girls on the internet saying, Hey, would you put your party photo? So it's user generated content, right? So people put their party party photos on our site and then other people come to look at the party photos. So we had this big chicken and egg problem and I'm stalking teen girls on the internet going, Hey, would you put your party photos up on my site? And it was like crickets. And I'm going, oh my God, this is weird. Like, what do I do? And then all of a sudden, one day, a party showed up and then another party showed up. And it was moms with Etsy shops uploading beautiful parties where they wanted to sell their Etsy products. And we, my husband and I looked at each other and we go, oh no, these are not teen girls. Teen girls are not going to think it's cool to put their party photos up on a site that has things like uh, Little Mermaid parties and Spider-Man parties. And then we stepped back and we thought to ourselves, wait a second, maybe this is our site. And so we pivoted because this is what our audience wanted. Our teen girls didn't want our site. Moms with Etsy shops did. So we leaned into that. We said, hey, Etsy mom, put a link to your Etsy shop in your party, you know, with your party photos. We gave you a space to do this. And all of a sudden they're like, cool, we're getting like free advertisement. And we were so psyched because these parties were so beautiful. So I think it's this idea that you have this hypothesis of what's going to work, right? We feel like we under, I was a teen, I was a teen girl. I write teen comedies. My husband works at MySpace. Like we know this. And I always think you have to hold your hypotheses really lightly because you might be wrong. And when, and you have to look to see, cause like we were looking at this going, oh no. And then it turned into a, oh my God, yes. 
So you always have to be testing and creating, like co-creating with your audience. Yeah, asking them what they want and seeing what shows up and then sometimes pivoting and paying attention to that. I love that. That's brilliant. And that it ended up being like so useful and exciting for the people that it was really the right platform for is. Yeah. And I think that it keeps like, like I would say it taught me for the first time that the goal is to stay nimble, to look at the world from different angles. Yeah. And pay attention to that feedback instead of, cause there was an opportunity there to just cave and scrap the whole idea and say, this isn't what we thought it was. It didn't work. And give up and move in a new direction, which I know a lot of people listening have probably had those moments where you launch something or you share something or you move in one direction and there's crickets. And so you think, oh no, it's a failure or I need to just scrap the whole thing and start on something else. When in truth, it's possible it might just be a pivot to make that thing successful. It might Mm -hmm. be a slight marketing shift or it might be a slight language messaging shift that makes all the difference and still makes that thing useful. So that's a really powerful lesson. I love that you figured that out. Yeah. And humbling, humbling, you know? And, and so I always say, you know, it's always that like weird uh, post you put on Instagram that does really well, or like the pin on Pinterest that like blows up. That's like, you're kind of embarrassed by, and there'll be times where you have like a beautiful image and you're like, this one's going to kill it. And it doesn't. And even if you look at the one that did blow up, you kind of can't even understand why it's so popular. So again, I think that it is about co-creating with your community and I'm a big believer in doing things that don't scale. I'm a big believer in getting on the phone with people in your audience and asking them questions to understand how they see the world and what problems they would like to fix in their lives. Yeah. Interviewing your people, taking great notes. Oftentimes the way your audience describes what they're going through is that specific emotional language is going to be your marketing gold. Because it's yes. oftentimes the thing that we're helping people with, um, a lot of the clients that I work with and myself included, we're often helping a past version of ourselves. And even though we've been through what they're going through, we don't have the same emotional language about it anymore because we're not in the thick of that challenge anymore. So actually talking to people, writing down what they say, the phrases that they use, I always underline it in my consult notebook, the phrase that was like, oh, wow, I would have never said it that way. But that's how so many people must be feeling. I feel caged in by technology. I'm like, ooh, caged in by technology. That sounds ooh, yeah. Really yeah, that's powerful. Good. A lot of people yeah. probably feel that way. Um, so yeah, that's marketing gold. And you can do it from so many different angles. You can survey your audience. You can hop on the phone with them. You can make your marketing about, hey, I'd love to talk to you. I was just in somebody else's funnel. I opt into things all the time because I like to see how other people are doing marketing and see how it's working on me. And all of his emails were like, hey, I know this is obviously an email I'm sending to whoever came here, but I would love to talk to you. Like, I am a person on the other end of this. Reply to this email and let's find a time to chat and actually connect. And I ended up booking a call with them because I was just loving how personal and personable their Mm -hmm. content was and they're doing that connection piece from their social media, also from their email sequencing. So there's such powerful ways to keep that connection alive, I think. Yeah. And I, I think that there, so there are two things that I'm, I'm thinking about right now. And one is called the curse of knowledge. And I didn't have a name for this, but then my, my daughter was like weirdly learning about stuff. And she's like, mom, do you know about this concept? And when she said it, I'm like, oh my God, I totally do. And the curse of knowledge is just what you were talking about, where you're further along and you know the nomenclature of like what you're talking about, but you forget that your people typically are really like beginners. And so we forget to use the language of the beginner to really ground our product to, so for example, like I was reading this marketing site and they're talking about conversions on their landing page and a conversion is a sale. 
That's all it is. But I thought to myself, oh my God, that is the curse of knowledge because they're assuming that they're like kind of trying to attract beginners and yet they're using language that they go, duh, of course we know what a conversion is and forgetting that their person showing up on this landing page probably doesn't. So when you can hear the problem or what they're struggling with, in their language, it is incredibly powerful. And I always say it's about like stepping back and making sure that a beginner can understand what you're talking about. Yeah, super powerful. Um, And speaking of messaging, speaking of having conversions, which is taking somebody, converting somebody who doesn't know who you are to being a customer, we're converting them over that sort of precipice. Um, There's a lot of, like I said, caged in by technology out there in the world of coaching and holistic practitioners, where a lot of the softwares and systems out there can be confusing at first. They can be clunky. They can be so multi-purpose that you're not sure how to apply it to your purpose. And you have solved that problem. So tell us a little bit about Milo Tree Cart and also what the Milo Tree pop-up app is. So what we, okay, so we initially built our Milo Tree pop-up app. And what it is, is it's a pop, it's like a WordPress plugin or one line of JavaScript code that you could probably put, you could put on like a, a website you own. You could put it on your Shopify store, but it can't be like you put it on a social media network. And what happens is somebody comes to your blog and it will pop up and it will say, follow me on Instagram or follow me on Pinterest or follow me on TikTok or YouTube, or Facebook, or join my email list. You could set it up how you like to do this. And the idea is if somebody's coming to your blog or website, that's like super valuable. And 80% of people who come to your site will leave and never come back. So how do you capture them into your ecosystem? So we created this pop-up actually for ourselves. We eat our own dog food. We did it for Catch My Party. And we started with Pinterest because Pinterest was driving us a lot of traffic. And because of our pop-up, we've grown our Pinterest followers to something like 1.7 million followers because people come to our site, usually from Pinterest, see our Pinterest pop up and follow us. Now, what we learned is that we needed to create the simplest little piece of technology ever. So we said, if we can make a decision on our end, that will be the right decision for 80 to 90% of our users, we're going to do that. So sure, there are weird use cases where people like email me and go, can it do this? And I'm like, nope, it can't do that, but it can do this really well. What we discovered was the more rope we gave people, the more options and things to opt in and opt out of, the the more people would hang themselves. You know, they would get caught up in it and it would get complicated or it wouldn't look good or whatever. So we have learned that fewer options is better, easier interfaces are better, especially because our users tend to be female creators who don't really want to dig in and like think it's cool to learn a whole new platform. So we came up with this idea for Milo Tree Cart for female creators, coaches, bloggers, any kind of creator to sell digital products to their audience. So here's a good example. I say digital product and I assume people know what that is. Mm -hmm. What is a digital product, right? So this is, this is my curse of knowledge. A digital product can be an ebook. It could be a course. It could be a workshop. It could be a membership. It could be coaching. Anything that you sell with your knowledge where it's not a physical good, you're not shipping anything in the mail. So we said, Hey, Let's create a a solution where content creators, predominantly women, can sell these products to their audience with like virtually no effort. So you can come to our platform called Milo Tree Cart, set up a product, and then we offer free hosted sales pages. And this is an example of where we try to make it so easy. Because here's the thing, when I would get on a call with somebody and they'd be like, 
yeah, like I don't want to keep just doing sponsored content or I just want like, I don't, I want to sell to my, and I built this audience and I want to sell to them. But the thought of creating a sales page is so, gives me such a headache and I don't want to have to watch a bunch of YouTube videos and I don't want to have to learn things like Elementor or all these other things. So we said, great, you know what we're going to do? We've got a sales page creator for you. We've got a template where we've got examples of what, like what the pieces are, and you can set up a free sales page in 10 minutes that we host for you. And all of a sudden now you can come up with your product idea. Like where I recommend people start is usually like a one hour paid workshop. And all you need is Zoom an email service provider like mail because we integrate directly with like mailchimp mailer like convert kit those services and milo tree cart set it up on milo tree cart create a sales page for a workshop go sell it and wait we will also give you a 14 day launch calendar that has e sales email templates canva templates for social media posts like i just want to make this easy for you because I want you to go test that idea. Remember from the beginning, we don't know if it's going to work. So the last thing I want you to do is go off for six months, work on this, perfect it, come to the market, try to sell it and nobody buys. I say do it the opposite way. Get a sales page up, go see it, go sell your heart out, which we can talk about, and then see if people purchase and if they purchase, you're onto something. And then you can take that little bit of like traction. I call it mining for gold. You're out in the hills, you're looking for gold and you look for those gold specks. And if you find them, that's where you dig and you go deeper. But if you don't find them, okay, you move over a little bit and you, you dig someplace else, but look for those gold specks. So let's say you get five people to sign up for your workshop. Oh my God. First of all, you're going to build out these evangelists. You're going to love on these people. You're going to deliver. They're going to buy from you again. They're going to tell their friends. You're going to get on the phone with these people. Like it, and then you're going to go, wait, I can take this paid workshop. I could turn it into a mini course. I could turn it into an ebook. I now know this is something people want and are willing to pay for. Yes. So we wanted to make a platform where you could test, test quickly, test easily. And wait, here's the best part too. We don't charge a monthly fee. So you can put up a free a sales page for free. We take a small 5% transaction fee on your sale. So go try it. You don't make any sales. You don't pay us anything. And when people then do make sales, they're fine paying us because they've been able to figure out their business easily and to find that gold. It's such an awesome like testing platform to ha have a place where you can do all that for free and that you guys don't even take a cut until they're making a profit is really generous and so good for that exploration phase. I, I mean, the first few years of my business were so about that. They were so about throwing spaghetti at the wall until something sticks and trying something to see, are these the people I want to be talking to? Is this something that feels right? What part of this is misaligned? Because it was a lot of two steps forward and one step back. And the truth is, every time you create one of these sales pages, every time you try to announce a workshop or whatever, if it doesn't work out, it can feel like, oh, I'm starting over from square one. And that is absolutely never the case. In that process, not only did you figure out how to launch something or how to share it or how to set up that sales page on Milo Cart, you also started feeling into what you as the facilitator of that thing is. And you get to so much information about how to start tweaking it when you actually take action. I, I think a lot of people sit and wait and they think, oh, when I'm clear, I'll have a <laughs> workshop. When I'm clear, I'll build a program. When I'm clear, I'll write the ebook. And it's like, no. Try the thing that's up for you right now, yeah. full steam ahead yeah. and get the experiential information. That's where the clarity comes from. The clarity exactly. comes from testing. From so I say you get two people to your workshop, you do it because yeah. you will learn and you will figure out like, what, are, what kinds of questions are they asking? You can get on the phone with them afterwards. Like it's worth it to go through that exercise. So I have this, I, this concept that, I, I, that has really resonated with my audience and it is the concept of doing B minus work. 
Because if you are a perfectionist, if you like strive for that A, you will never get anything done. And there's no such thing as perfection. So remember, now I am not saying do average work. B minus is above average. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying you need to do above average work, but B minus is doable. And even though you think you might be doing A level work, it really isn't because you haven't tested it yet with your audience. So B minus, you put it out there, you be a tiny bit embarrassed. I always use that as the barometer. What I say to my audience, if like they're wanting to say, um, they wrote a blog post, let's say, or they have a product idea or whatever, and they're going to post it and put it out there. And I say, be embarrassed. And if you feel like if you're too embarrassed, give it to me. Like, let me read it. And I will be your girlfriend. And I will tell you like, okay, yes, this is embarrassing and you shouldn't, or no, you do it. And I have to tell you that that has happened now to me multiple times. And never have I said, Ooh, don't post it. It's embarrassing. Every single time I've said, you go, you post it. It is not embarrassing. You'd be proud of this. Go put it out there because we hold ourselves to such an unrealistic standard. And my thing is always trying to push people like off the ledge. Nobody's really thinking about you. Nobody's caring. So go be embarrassed in your head and put it out there. Yeah. And most often the thing that you find embarrassing where it was too vulnerable to share or too personal to share or too bold to share, like, how dare you be that audacious? Those are the things that turn people on the most because they carry the most energy. If you're having that much self-doubt come up about it, it's probably potent AF and worth sharing. And you know, the worst that can happen is it's up for a few days and you really decide, you know what? I got to take it down. You can take down a post. It's not a big deal, mm -hmm. but letting mm -hmm. it have some room to breathe. And, and that starts building that muscle of like, you know what? Last time my voice in my head was saying, you shouldn't, you can't, it's terrible. I had all those people reply and comment and like that thing. So maybe that voice in my head isn't actually right. And you get to yes. start building that database of evidence to counteract yes. that self-critic, that logical mind that's talking you out of doing the things you want to be doing. Yes. And as you build that body of evidence, you just get more and more confident, more and more comfortable sharing anything you want to share into the future. Totally. Like we, like we are all unreliable narrators. Like yeah. We think we're seeing the world clearly and we're not, and we're especially not being clear about ourselves. We are more critical of ourselves. We are more judging, all of that stuff. And so especially as women, we have a tendency to kind of hold ourselves back. And this is why, like, I say this, I say, when you are selling something, go be salesy. Because that's always like the word, like, I don't want to be salesy. And I will tell you again, it's one of those things where I have not yet coached anybody where I say, go be salesy, that I've had to go, oh, let's pull back. That's like a little much. We, in fact, err on the side of being like, hey, P.S., you might want this, but maybe you don't. So I don't want to put any pressure on you. But if you want to buy my $5 ebook, it's here whenever you're ready. Like that is yeah. a typical sales statement. Instead of saying, I'm not selling snake oil. What I am selling is solving a problem for you. I am making your life better. I believe in this with all of my heart and all of my soul. So I know if you buy this, this is a win-win for both of us. And hopefully it's a bigger win for you. Yeah. And that is with that level of clarity and connection and leaning into selling is service where you go be salesy. Again, I've never told anybody to pull back because it's embarrassing, like, oh, I'm too salesy. So yes. I say go lean into it because, again, we hold ourselves back. Yeah. Like I say, go be embarrassed, go be salesy, go put out not perfect work. Like that's how you build a business. Definitely. And testing and trying and seeing how it feels and then pushing through that discomfort on the way there. I will say that discomfort that's coming up is a sign that you're facing a lesson for you. And as you lean into it, like Jillian is saying, and as you move through it and get to the other side, you, become, you transform, you become a different version of yourself. And that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, a heart-based practitioner who's marketing their services and getting visible. You transform in the process. You step into that leadership role more and more and more, the more you're willing to do it and lean through that discomfort. 
and there's an alchemicalization process that happens. And yeah, that's how you become who you're meant to be is by leaning through that. And it's so exciting for me, especially with Milo Tree Cart, because uh, by the way, I like right now we are kicking the tires of our own product. So I am walking people through for free, getting on calls with them, helping them with their sales strategy, helping them set up their workshops. And it is so satisfying for me watching the transformation that they are having because a lot of them are bloggers and introverts who kind of hide behind their businesses and yet feel this sense of disconnection from their audiences. So I've been helping them set up paid workshops. And there's this one food blogger who's like a, a whole living kind of like um, whole foods type blogger. And she felt this disconnect. She's putting out recipes and stuff and people, and she has like tremendous traffic and people are consuming her content, but she has no real way to access them. They're not emailing her. They're not leaving comments. So she set up a paid workshop to help people get off sugar because she's a big proponent. She's healed herself and she did, and she's an introvert. And I could tell that she was super nervous about it and she did it. And people showed up for her because she has this big audience and she was able to touch them and help them and help them on their journey and recognize the impact that she was having in the world and how having that real connection, making other people's lives better was so nourishing for her that she got past all of those insecurities of like, oh, what do I look like on video? And what if I sound stupid or I stumble over my words or whatever, that she was having an impact. And to her, it was like watching her blossom. Mm -hmm. And now she's like, I'm going to do it every quarter because, you know, I want to help my people. And you bring the, and by the way, other people have done this and gotten coaching clients to somebody else did a paid workshop and she only got like four people. And she was like, huh, that's really weird. But then she turned them all into coaching clients and they're worth thousands of dollars to her because she showed up with them, showed them what she was about, kind of gave a DIY version that they could go do. That's what she was teaching. Or she said, you could pay me and I'll do this for you. And all of a sudden they're like, hey, we trust you. We see what you're doing. We understand how difficult this is. We will happily pay you. Yes. So it was like you make, so while the internet feels really big, it's actually building these relationships one-on-one. -on -one. It's people. Yeah. It feels like bots or it feels like mean people out there. But the truth is, I would say that when you get to it, people can be really lovely and you make these connections that are really heartfelt. Yeah. And you get to make a difference in people's lives and they get to receive it and feel supported. And so it's a win, win, win all around. Yeah. So Powerful. when I see this, like this is what gets me up in the morning is helping yeah. entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs find their purpose. They know it, but it's like a little small seed. And to watch that grow is so beautiful. It's amazing. It's like stepping into themselves. It's awesome. So I know there's people out there leaning into this easy, almost done for you, Milo Tree sales page. Cart, yeah, option. Milo Tree cart. Milo yeah. Tree cart. So tell us how people can find it and how they can follow you. So go to MiloTreeCart.com, set up an account. Remember, it's all free until you start making sales, and then you'll be happy. Um, and just you can, it's super easy to use. Click on a button of a product you want to make, whether it be a workshop, whether it be a membership, whether it be coaching, whether it be a custom link. We're just rolling out digital downloads. So, like for your ebook, um, and it's really easy. And your sales page is right there and it's mobile friendly and it's super easy. We integrate with Stripe, which is our credit. Okay, that's another example. I was saying Stripe, thinking people know what Stripe is. It's a credit card processor, awesome. best yeah. in class. So it's like we really tried to think to get into the mindset of the creator, not the tech bro, the create the female creator. Yeah. And so that's who we really serve. Awesome. You've shared so much amazing wisdom. We'll put that link in the show notes for you guys so you can check it out and have easy access to check out Milo Tree Cart. Milo is M-I-L-O, just so you know. And you shared so much wisdom and magic on this episode already. Are there any last words of wisdom you want to leave people with? 
please, okay, reach out to me, get on a call with me. You can email me at jillian at milotree.com. I read every email and get back to everybody. If you have any questions about this, if you want me to help you set up your digital product, I will be happy to, but I'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear kind of what you want to be putting out into the world to make it better. Awesome. Thank you, Jillian. You're super generous. I'm very excited about this as an option. I help people use softwares and technology all the time. And I love that this is um, such an easy to use alternative to a lot of the bigger platforms out there. So thank you for doing your work and sharing your magic. And thanks for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you everyone out there for listening. And don't forget whatever happens, keep asking big questions and taking bold action because you are here for a reason.